हेलो वेलकम टू मॉड्यूल 47 ऑफ एन पी टी एल एन ओ सी एन इंट्रोडक्टरी कोर्स ऑन पॉइंट सेट टोपोलॉजी पार्ट टू सो टुडे वी विल इंट्रोड्यूस द ऑर्डर टोपोलॉजी सो फार यू आर ओनली स्टडीइंग द पार्शियल ऑर्डर सेट्स टोटली ऑर्डर सेट एंड सॉन ओनली सेटिक आस्पेक्ट सो टुडे वी आर ब्रिंगिंग द टोपोलॉजी in a sense we had already done this in part 1 so some part of it will be just a recalling that example it was an example there of a topology so let us recall that start with a linearly ordered set or whatever you call totally ordered set for any point x in x let us have this notation lx is the left ray so here i am taking open left ray all y less than equal to x rx is the right open ray all y bigger than x these are respectively called left ray and right ray they are also called respectively initial segment and terminal segment so this terminology also we have used now let us have this l to be the lx where x is inside this is a family now okay family of all left rays r is family of all right rays s is s l union r so family of various subsets of of our x take this as a sub base any subset can be taken as a sub base for a topology right all that you have to do is take all finite intersections and then take all possible unions that is the topology so take s as a sub base for topology which you will denote by tau less than less than or equal to that uh, denoting and you know, this one denoting that this topology corresponds to the partial order here okay for x less than y let us also have this notation this interval x comma y is not an ordered pair here set of all z in x such that x is less than z less than y so all points strictly between x and y it may be empty also we don't know borrowing the terminology and practice from real analysis okay lx rx xy etc are all called open intervals okay likewise we define closed intervals and half closed intervals also all that you have to do is you have to put the less than or equal to here less than or equal to here or only one of them places and so on i don't want to go into those details those things are common practice so i will also use them there is no need to again spend uh, two minutes to for example if i take uh, here if i take less than or equal to then that will be the called closed ray similar closed rays right closed left ray and closed right ray etc so yeah so we shall list a few important properties of the topological space some of the proofs being either trivial or left to you as an exercise because some of these things we have seen before also if you have a order preserving bijection from x less than or equal to, to y less than or equal to prime so these are two different uh, uh, you know linear orders suppose you have an order preserving bijection then this thing as a as a uh, map from topological space is corresponding topology i put now is a homeomorphism of the respective order topological spaces indeed it will preserve the base base sub basic open sets themselves so so it's a very strong homeomorphism right so if x has no least element nor greatest element then the family b of all open sets that is b x y x less than equal to y x and y belonging to x this form a base it is not the same if there are least element and greatest element if you take uh, intersections of of left rays and right rays you will get these things but you know to get a base you will have to include 
those elements also. So that you have to be a bit careful about that one. All right. For example, zero to one, both close. If we only take uh, uh, open race, then there will be problem, right? So you will have to see what you have to take zero close, one uh, say half open, and so on. So that is why all that you have to do is exactly same kind of thing you have to. If zero prime, I would like to put a prime here, not to confuse with real numbers. It's the least element of this x. Suppose there is one. I am not assuming there is one. If there is one, all that you have to do is put this this kind of uh, half open intervals also in the base similarly if there is a greatest element infinity prime here put the half open intervals closed on the right also as inside the base basic open sets then that will be a base whereas uh, defining the sub base there is no such problem now first thing we observe is this topology is Hausdorff. So, given x less than y, of course, given x not equal to y, x is less than y or x is bigger than y, so I can assume x less than y. Okay. If there is a z such that x less than z less than y, then we can take u equal to lz and v equal to rz as disjoint open subsets, left ray and right ray, okay, open left ray then x will be inside u and y will be inside v. Okay, so, you are done. I am I'm, I'm, I'm giving you an, uh, you know, an argument to show that uh, this, this topology is Hausdorff. On the other hand, if there is no z at all okay, between x and y, this can happen. Uh, for example, when you take natural numbers included in the larger space and so on, right? So, such that there is no uh, element between them, then what happens? Then all that I can take is take the open Rx, open left ray Rx, and open left ray R, uh, Ly. Okay. Ly will contain x, and Rx will contain z. <laughs> they will not have any, they will not have any, any, uh, any problem. So, there is nothing in between, so so there is uh, intersection will be empty, right? So on the other hand, if there is no z such that x less than z less than y, then you take u s l y and we go to R x. So there will be disjoint open subsets containing x and y respectively. Now let B be any non-empty subset of x. If supremum of a respectively infimum of b infimum of a and uh, you can take a or b or whatever exists then supremum of b is inside v bar ok so yeah, I should say supremum of b exists infimum of b exists it is in the closure see this closure is uh, with respect to the topology now respectively infimum of b is inside v bar supremum and infimum the proof is exactly similar actually much simpler if you think do not use any algebra, no need for uh, algebra of real number. Okay. Definition of the infimum, that is what you have to use and what is the meaning of open to, uh, set here and what is the meaning of clo you know, closure and so on. We may assume that B is not a singleton okay. because supremum of A, supremum of B will be singleton, that singleton itself or oh, it will be already inside that one, that is nothing to prove. So, we have to show that every neighborhood u of x, which x is I am denoting by supremum of b, intersects b. That is the meaning of that x will be inside b bar. Okay. Since u contains in the open interval s to x x closed, okay, u contains u is an open subset, some s to x will be there inside the open subset containing uh, x, right. So, for some x that uh, it will be there, maybe on the other side also, I do not know that one. Okay, I do not I don't care. It is enough to prove that this Sx intersection B is non empty. I want to show that U intersection B is non empty. But if this is the case, if this is empty, okay, what happens? This S will be smaller, you know, x will not be supremum, s will be smaller than that one, that will be a bound, upper bound for B. 
right? So this is a contradiction. So it has to intersect. So that's all I am using. The moment you come, the supreme moment you come a little lower, there must be elements of B, right? That's what uh, uh, supremum means. All right. So similarly, infimum of B is also inside B if B is closed. Otherwise, it's inside B bar. Okay. So in part one, we have proved that if X is connected, then it is order complete also. I am just recalling that one. If X satisfies the property that between any two distinct elements, there is a third element, then the converse is also true. So these two things we had proved there, right? Now recall that we use connectivity to prove that every closed interval in R is compact. That is what <laughs> we had done there. But we can use, you know, we then used it to prove Heinemann theorem. First of all, prove the closed interval is uh, closed intervals in R are compact, and then pass down to R and so on. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Closed intervals are closed intervals. Yeah. Minus infinity plus infinity you don't call closed interval. Forget it. Open intervals can be bounded or unbounded. In the same vein, we can prove something you can say this is Heinemann theorem now. Okay. So start with a totally order set, take A to be a compact subset then A is closed in X and A is complete and bounded. In the bounded means what? In the induced order topology on it. Okay, completeness comes there. Conversely, if X is order complete, then every closed and bounded subset of X is compact. Okay. See, its completeness, order completeness, comes by taking the sub this uh, this uh, this the same relation restricted to A. So that is why I have to in, in the induced order. Okay, so this is if and only if part. Compactness implies closed and bounded. Closed and bounded implies compact. Let us go through it carefully. Start with the compact set A. Suppose A is not bounded above. If a subset is not bounded above, original space is also not bounded above, right? Therefore, the family LX, X belong to X, becomes an open cover for X itself. So, in particular, it will cover A also. But since A is compact, we will get a finite cover. A is contained inside I to 1 to N LX size. Take X to be the maximum of X1, X2, Xn. There are only finitely many of them, okay, in a totally order set. So you can take maximum. It follows that A is bounded by X, right? Because LX size were all contained inside LX now. Which is a contradiction. You just said A is not bounded. Similarly, we can show that A is bounded below. This is this is what we have shown bounded above. Similarly, we can show bounded below exactly the same thing. Instead of LX, you take RX. Okay, so it is bounded. Now X is Hausdorff space, we have seen just now. It follows that being a compact subset, it is closed also. We started with the assumption that A is compact. Finally, the order completeness of A follows easily from what we have just uh, observed, namely infimum and supremum of this set, which are well defined because A is a, uh, a, is a bounded set. They will be inside A, they will be inside A bar, but A is A bar is equal to A because A is closed. So they are inside A over. So that is precisely the meaning of uh, uh, the order completeness, right? For the converse part, let X less than be order complete and A be a closed and bounded subset. It follows that with respect to the order restricted to A, A itself is order complete and bounded, right? 
Therefore, without loss of generality, we may assume that x itself is bounded and prove that x is compact. Order completeness and bounded and is compact instead of sub proving that sub for a subset. So, that is how I stated if x is order complete okay, and bounded, then it is compact. Here we invoke Alexander sub base theorem. Okay, so, what we do? take u to be an open cover for x by members of a subfamily members of a standard sub base a subfamily of a sub base you have to fix a sub base then take subfamily of that which will cover x that cover should have finite sub cover so that is enough from by alexander sub base theorem okay so here what we do we take the family of all left rays and right rays that S equal to L union R remember that. <coughs> so, take a sub family from there which covers X and get a sub, uh, sub, sub cover then Alexander sub base theorem says the, the space X must be compact. <coughs> so, put alpha equal to minimum of X x is bounded okay the immediately we are using that then alpha cannot be in any right ray because i am taking only open rays here and hence it must belong to one of the left rays because left rays and right rays are going to cover i mean i have chosen some family u of left rays and right rays right that covers it is not all all the left rays and right rays some left rays and right rays which cover. So, x alpha must be in one of them. So, it must be in a left ray. Okay, put L prime equal to all those x for which L x is inside you. So, this is non empty. This set L, L prime is non empty. Why? Because alpha must be in one of them. Okay, one of the L x. Then what we have seen just now I want to say that L prime is non empty. Now, once your L prime is non empty, you put beta equal to supremum of L prime. L prime x is supremum of L prime is because L prime is subset of x after all. So, it is bounded, bounded above all. So, supremum x is order completeness is used. Then, this beta prime cannot be in L x because it is bigger than all of them, right. So, if it is here, then, then beta would be less than equal to x, actually less than x. So, beta will not be in L x for any x inside L prime. Therefore, beta must be all these are uh, left rays are all taken here. So, what is left out <laughs> right? So, beta will must be down to R y for some R y inside you. This means something belongs to R y means that beta must be bigger than y. Okay, strictly bigger than y. Since beta is the supremum of L prime, you see, I have chosen y is less, less than beta, there will be some elements here. It follows that there is x belong to L prime between y and beta, y less than x, less than equal to beta, it may be beta fine. Okay, there must be some element like this. Okay, in L prime, beta itself is not in L prime. Okay, perhaps. See, beta is not in L x for any x prime. So, so y is I but I have put I have used the supremum here. So, this is the property of supremum y less than x less than equal to beta. But then we have these two members L x and R y okay, belonging to you L x union R y must be equal to x. Okay. everything must be between uh, the supremum and infimum after all <laughs> minimum and maximum of this next we have seen that connectivity implies order completeness this also we have seen just i recall that in the part one that is what one of the things we have proved if x is well ordered see this all a totally order subset and then a, a topology Connectivity implies order completeness, that is one way. But if it is well ordered, it is highly 
uh, far from connectivity but that also implies it is order complete much easier way much simpler way right because it is trivial to satisfy the condition that every subset which is bounded below has greatest lower bound as a least element actually least element belongs to that set and so on that is the uh, well ordering okay once uh, bounded below sets have uh, le uh, least uh, i mean greatest lower bound then the other one also follows these two are equivalent so order completeness follows very easily on the other hand well ordering implies that the topology is totally disconnected that's what i said is far away from being connectivity okay so how do we see we will see this one namely x belong to x be not a maximum not the maximal element okay pick up some element is not maximal that is rx not equal to empty set if there are elements bigger than x this means rx is non empty we take the infimum of rx and denote it by x plus 1 and call it the immediate successor of x immediate successor by the way this immediate successor is the key to the entire i would say of this piano axioms and zermelo frankel zermelo and so on this was actually goes back to grassmann in uh, modern set, uh, set theory perhaps his, his name doesn't appear but this immediate successor you know he pointed out this is the one which you have to now this is the idea which you have to use so finally it was piano who whose axioms became the best there were many many trials in between several people had tried it you know one of the other guy whose name is quite quoted is uh, did a kind okay so piano's axiom is based on the entire algebra of natural numbers is constructed out of this this is the this is the first time it appears this plus sign this is algebra right x plus 1 we are not going to do any algebra we are stopping here x plus 1 is all that i want okay so if rx is non empty for any x then you take the infimum because it is a total or well order so infimum exists and it is unique that infimum is called x plus 1 so it follows that the half closed ray r x 1 bar i am do, i am i am putting now this bar denotes the closure also so there is no contradiction here if you take the topology this will be the closure you can just define this set to be all x plus all y which is bigger than or equal to x plus 1 okay x plus 1 less than or equal to y strictly less than y would have been open r x plus 1 right open ray so closed ray is this one so it this equal to the open ray and hence is a closed subset so x plus 1 is a closed ray but if you take the open ray rx what happens there is no element between x and x plus 1 right so open ray rx is also equal to that therefore yeah therefore this is both open and closed this is a closed open set right therefore if x is less than y if you take any y then this r x plus 1 bar okay this r x plus 1 bar would be a closed set containing y and not containing x so there is a separation so you can actually write down separation lx plus 1 you know bar r x this is separation of this one so this is strong uh, totally disconnectedness namely it actually satisfies our s1 that is that what we have studied earlier okay so is stronger than hausdorffness is stronger than totally disconnectedness also in any case every point other than the least and the greatest element are cut points this cut points is also used this is a, this is a contribution of dede kind cut points means what you throw away one point the space become disconnected 
okay such points are called cut points so i think uh, this much topology is good enough for one day so indeed uh, we will have many other topological aspects of this one because finally what our aim is to produce lots of uh, examples out of one single example right so we will meet again more topology next time we shall construct the ordinals the example that we are interested in so far thank you